Well, Annie asked me a couple of weeks ago to talk about Latvia, and uh, I was sick last week, so I didn't make it. So now I'm taking Steve's place. And the first question I want to ask, what do you think a person like me is doing 8,000 miles away doing God's work in a little in a little country right next to Russia. Why would God call ask me to go? Because he knows a good thing Well, you know, I asked myself that many times in January, February, March, after Randy asked me to go and I prayed about it and read verses and you know how God works you know the first time I went I knew why I was, I was going I had met them over here two years you know two years before that and then or three years four years before that during COVID, before COVID and then COVID hit and all that <clears throat> but this time I didn't know why I was going I didn't understand why God would want me to go back and I prayed about it and read. And you know how God works. Every time you get in the Bible and you start reading the Bible and God is trying to tell you to do something, it always comes to that. It seems like in your head, you think, you know, the one of the ones I read, asking you shall be given, given you, seeking you shall find, knocking the door will open. You know, that's Matthew 7, 7. And that, that doesn't have anything to do with me, but every, when I read that, God said, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about, buddy. And throughout the Bible, in many places, and I'm, I'm big on prayer, I have to admit, I, I think that's the only way you get to talk to God, and, and I, I really believe in prayer and and that's when God tells you what he wants you to do. Uh, and another one is in Romans 8.26, in the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for, for us through wordless groans. And that's the way God works, folks. Now, I didn't know why I was going, but I knew God wanted me to go. And I didn't know till I got back why God wanted me to go. And I'm not going into detail what we did over there. You're going to hear a lot about that. But I'll go into a little bit about what we did. Every morning we'd pray. We'd get in a circle after we had coffee and we'd pray. And then we'd go out and we went to the elderly home. We went to meal, uh, a place where the after school mis uh, ministry that, and we went to Hope Center. Hope Centers for young ladies that are pregnant can go if they don't have a home, if they're homeless can go and and we went to all these different places and and after after we'd go that night every night and usually we'd get back about 9 30 to 10 30. of course it doesn't get dark till 11 30 over there so we didn't know you know we were just doing and going and and it gets daylight before four so you just go and go and but Every night we would meet where we live. We live in, in what they call a hostel, which is a, a, a do we would call a dorm. Uh, in one room there'll be three beds, in another room there'll be two, and they'll have one, one bathroom for those two rooms. And a bathroom is just a toilet and a sink. 
if you got to go down the hall to shower and there's two shower rooms down the hall and so it's the ki the the people that are there they have colleges there and technical schools there and the people that are in those schools they stay there during the during the year but this time of year there are not many of them there okay so that's where we stay but we we'd meet there and we'd we'd the first thing we'd do is say where did you see god today so we we would say where we saw god that day okay and the first the second day we were there well it was which was sunday the first sunday we were there and there was this young man he was 14 Marcus, and he, he's the lay leader's son and he just took to me for some reason and I don't know why he's 14 13, 14 he's the same age as uh, Liz Brown within a few months of the same age and he took to me and I you know we talked in Latvia, the young people can talk English, okay? Because they watch TV. They, they, they get on the internet and they get on YouTube and they get on Facebook. And they, so they, they know how to speak English. And he, 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 he spoke good English, fairly good. And he kind of took to me and the next day, we went to the elderly home in Leopie, which is just about three miles away. And on the top floor of the, no, no. First day we went to the, went to the Hope Center. Hope Center is on the top floor with the ladies and their kids. And the bottom floor is a church, Leopie Methodist Church. And they're the ones that have the after school program. And that was fixed to be over. And we, we knew the lady that ran it for 15 years. So we wanted to give her, you know, going away presents and first one thing and another. But we, we get there and we're going to be playing with the kids, the after school kids. But it's not after school because the school was over, but they all came anyway, okay? <laughs> for this celebration of Viva. And there was Micah's. And Micah's brought a friend of his who was Gabriel. And we played with the kids and we just had the best time and we did this and did that and ate pizza and just had the best time. <clears throat> And he just hung me like glue. And even Gabriel, who's older than him, Gabriel is, was finishing the ninth grade. And in Latvia, if you, when you finish the ninth grade, you can go to technical school or you can start the 10th, 11th, and 12th. Some, some of them go, if you're going to go to the university, you go to 10th, 11th, and 12th, and then go to the university. If you're going to, if you're going to have, be in a technical school, after the ninth grade, you go to technical school. For, it depends on what you're going to go for. It's somewhere between two and four years. And, uh, and Gabriel was going to uh, technical school, fixing to go to technical school to be an electrician. And, uh, and he, he, he hung to me like glue, too. And I said, what are these, what are these kids? And what I realized... And we, this, this went on, this went on. We went to, an, we went to uh, the elderly home and this, this young lady was there. She went with us. And her name is Eve. And she is Elga's, which Elga is one of the leaders of the church. Eve happens to be Elga's Okay, let me get this right. See, in, in Latvia, godmothers and godfathers are big. Everybody has a godmother and a godfather. Well, this is 
This is Elga's goddaughter's daughter. Okay? Pretty young lady. She's 10. I mean, she's, and she's tw going into 12th grade, I think, this year. And she was there. And she, she speaks perfect English. In fact, she says, like all the time, just like all our, our kids, you know, <laughs> you know. In fact, I started every time she'd say like, I'd say like, and she'd go on like, and just messing with her, you know, and, and, uh, and we talked and cause all these, you know, me, I want to be able to have an interpreter real close <laughs> because I want to talk to these people. Uh, The next day, Eve came and she brought a friend. Okay, and this friend was a little younger than about Gabriel's age probably. She was in the ninth, tenth grade. And she brought a friend and they just had, we just had such a good time together. Now, these are young people, folks. <coughs> These are young people, and and uh, Liz was there, and and they intermingle with Liz. Of course, Liz got their all their. They're doing it now, you know. They're talking to each other and going on, but they always asking questions, asking me questions about this, about that, and. Let me go back to the, when we first got there, of course, you know me, I'm wearing my hat. And one of the ladies, Christina, who used to be the pastor, still goes to that, to Thesis Church, but she's not the pastor anymore. I told her that I probably wouldn't be wearing the hat because I don't want to stand out. And she said, no, I want you to wear that hat all the time. Okay, you know, so I wore it all the time because Christina, which I thank the world of, and her hus husband. Uh, now, were those kids hanging on and talking to me because I was an American, because I was different? Why, why were those young people <laughs> hanging just around me all the time. You know, we worked Thursday and Friday of that week, and there was Gabriel and, and Micah right there working with us. Uh, and it doesn't matter why those people were with us, those kids. But they even went, came back to the hot, the, the where we were staying, hostel, and, and was with us in our devotional time. We had a devotional too, but we, had, we, we all talked and we had a devotional. And Micah, I asked Micah, Micah, what do you got to say? Where do you see God today? And he, he spoke right up and talked, and Gabriel spoke right up and talked, and where he saw God today, and I don't know if... Gabriel had, knew about God or not, but he talked. And Christina, after all that, she says that's the first time she'd ever heard Micah talk about God. Was that that was the very first time, and she she'd known him since he was just a a, a, a kid. And of course, then there's Daniel. Daniel is a gentleman, when, we, when they started going, was about this tall. He's married with a, a little girl. He's pretty close to my height now. He's late 20s probably. Same way with him. And it, it's just so uplifting. And I didn't really realize it till I got back home and Sandra wouldn't let me go anywhere. <laughs> I think God sent me over there for those young kids, those young people. 
why would they send an old man like me? And why did those kids just take to me so fast? Because I was wearing a hat. All of them put the hat on. <laughs> I guarantee you, every one of them, I got pictures of Eve putting the hat on. Uh, but I realized God, that's what God does. God doesn't tell you why. He just asks you to go. And don't ever think an excuse will make a difference. In my, in my walk many times, somebody asked me to do something. I'm not qualified. I'm not qualified to do that. That's the first, my first excuse. How many, of us, how many of us have had that excuse before? I'm not qualified. Well, folks, I'm gonna tell you something. You don't have to be qualified. God will qualify you on your, on your journey, okay? No matter what it is. God will qualify you. The things to say, the people to go up to, God has it. All you have to do is, is have the nerve to say, I will go. You know, it's many times in this lifetime, you don't know, understand why you're going to do something. I couldn't explain to Sandra before I left why I was going. Okay, she really didn't want me to go. I don't think. I didn't care. <laughs> but she, <clears throat> she, she paid my ticket, <laughs> my airline ticket to get over there. And I realized why God wanted me to go. And if it was because we were Americans and we were different and those young people came to us, and they just kept coming and just kept wanting to see what everything was about. And every time, even her little friend, I forget her name, they, they were with us during our where, we, our, where we saw God at night. Every time. I don't care if we didn't get back till 1030 at night. We would have the devotional that night. And we would talk about where we saw God. And over there, you see God everywhere you look. Okay, everything you do, you know. And God is the same over there as he is here. And that's, that's the key. God is the same God. He works exactly the same over there as, as he does over here. And over there... Those people, they call us the rich Americans for a reason, okay? Uh, don't have a lot, but they love the Lord as much as we do. They depend on the Lord probably more than we do. And they give to the Lord just as much as we do. And the last, the last Sunday we were there, of course, on Thursday and Friday, we we put floor down in the church. The church, the Thacy's church, Lost Lake Christy. Okay, they, the heat was wood, but they have to have a fan, electric fan, to blow into this. A lot of people heat with wood over there, though, so it's nothing new. But they have to have a fan to blow into that to circulate the, through radiators. They, they have radiators all over the place. And all you old people know what radiators are, right? <laughs> Those things on the wall that get hot and, you know. Well, electricity went off. They didn't know it. And it blew all those radiators. And it, it didn't just blow them on the floor beside it. It blew them across the room. When it blew, 
those radiators blew across the room. So we painted, we put down flooring, we did this, we did that. And, <clears throat> but they had insurance, you know, to, to get this done. Uh, and that's what we were doing. We were trying to save a little money by doing it ourselves. And, uh, but that last day, that last Sunday, we were fixing to leave and go to uh, Riga, which is Riga is where we flew out of and into. Riga is a big town. It's a beautiful city. Uh, but we, we went over to Liliana's house, who is Micah's mother, and everybody shows up. I mean, people we have seen here, people we've seen there, some of them, a lot of them were in church that Sunday, but we went over there and one family that we worked with two years ago, he's the one that smokes the chicken, best chicken I ever had in my life. And I told him so. Come to find out, that Sunday before we left, he had chicken. He had come an hour and a half. They live an hour and a half. A lot of times they, they zoom because it's an hour and a half away. And, uh, but he came with all, brought that chicken. I swear that Americans cook chicken too hard. I mean, they too dry. You, you don't cook chicken till it's dry. <laughs> but it's the best chicken I ever had. I, but anyway, he came and and uh, and we all stood around in a circle after I ate five pieces of chicken. <laughs> Didn't eat anything else though, so just the five pieces of chicken. And. We started talking about where we saw God. And there Micah, Micah was, and Gabriel wasn't there, Eve was there, and all those. And I think, you know, this is what it's about. This is, as, as Dean would say in service, this is church. All those people gathering together, and some of them hadn't been in church since we were there before. That's not up to me to decide. They came to see us because they were friends. I'll tell you one thing. If you ever saw God in a woman, you would see it in Laura Rollins while she's over there. She goes up to these people, can't speak a word of Latvian, they can't speak a word of English, and they hug and they talk, 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 talk. Laura had a problem with their hearing. It doesn't make any difference. God just does it. And they just thank the world of Lori Rollins over there. They just think she's the, and she is. She's a totally different person over there. She's a, she, she had a gift to go there. And Liz, you know, here's a 13, 14 year old girl. She gave one of the devotionals. Yeah, she, it's just like she was meant to go. Laurie was meant to go. You know, Randy, Jeff, uh, Chad, you know, they were all meant to go for a reason. Even, even old men like me, and I was the oldest one there. <laughs> yeah, I know the feeling there. I'm always the oldest one. <laughs> But don't ever tell God that you're not unqualified to do something. And when you pray, listen, you ask. First thing you do in prayer, you thank God for all your blessings. The second time, and then you ask him for this, that, or the other. And then you listen. You have to listen to God. You have to sit there, lay there, whatever you do when you pray, 
and listen to what God has to tell you to do. Because he has, he has a job for every single person in this church. He has a job for us. Or three or four. He, he's a good God. And I got such a blessing from, from going out. And I, I don't know if I'll go back or not. I probably won't. I can say that now because Sandra left. <laughs> I wouldn't say that in front of her. And if I want her to know it, I'll let I'll tell I'll tell her myself. <laughs> She'll probably listen to it on the video. But just remember, we all have a job to do. The eyes, the ears, the nose, the feet. God is ahead. And I thank you for listening. That's it. Now, what time is it? Do they have any oh. plans to come back here? Oh, any questions? I got two minutes. <laughs> huh? Do they have any plans to come back here? Well, the, th the problem was them coming over here, it costs so much. Yeah. You know, for us to go over there, it doesn't cost as much as for them to come over here. Okay. So, the that's. The, didn't enjoy coming. Yeah, uh, but the, the church in Sice is, is doing well. They're still United Methodists, and that doesn't matter, but uh, they're, they're concerned about that very much, about the theology, the traditional, they call it traditional theology. And... They have problems over there that we don't have over here with the government being recognized at the church and everything. And so and I went through all that. Uh, Christina is a pastor, but she's not pastoring right now. And we talked for three hours about this affiliation and everything. God still talked to me about that. So I won't go into that, but... Yes, ma'am. Carol. Yeah, excuse my ignorance because I don't know where it's located as well as I should, but being so close to Russia, is there any potential for any danger for them in any way? They're worried sick. It's past Ukraine. They, they, up north. Or Latvia north. is due west. It's west. The, bound, the east boundary of Latvia is Russia. Yeah. And the south... The south, one part of the south boundary is Belarus. And the people that know about Belarus know that Belarus is just whatever Russia tells them to do, they'll do. They're just a pawn for Russia. So, yes, they have a, they have a big problem, real big. We need to pray for them on that, too. Pastor that came over here, the lady, didn't she have children or a child? At that time, she didn't. Now yeah, she has now. two. That's Christina. Yeah. That's Christina. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Huh? Those Russian generals, they said that Putin, don't mess with Latvia. There's a cat in Texas there with a hat on him. <laughs> 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 and <laughs> Christine's Christine's father was a Russian soldier. Now this was just after World War II. So if history tells us that Russia was fighting with us really to against Germany. Kinda. Kinda. Russia fights for Russia. Yeah, yeah. Russia only fights for Russia, but he, uh, her dad was a Russian soldier, and now he's a Methodist minister in Riga. Riga has two Methodist churches, Riga 1 and Riga 2. And Riga 2, he's a, he's a pastor, and we met him and talked to him at length. Uh, one day when we were in Riga and uh, 
he asked about different stuff. There's another lady there, Gita. She used to be the DS. We I met we met the DS. That's the DS now while we're there. And uh, but they they're you know like like I told Christina. I said Christina, this you only got one. And you don't have one question to answer. Do you believe in the Bible? Or do you believe in worldly things? If you believe the Bible is the true word of God, then that should be the, the key. And Gita, who's also high in the, in the church still, uh, two years ago, she said, you Americans sure messed this up, didn't you? <laughs> And we did. It all this stuff with United Met came from from the United States. It didn't it didn't start over there or start in Africa. It started here. We we're the ones that messed it up. But anyway. Any any more questions? Yeah, Jerry. Are they still supported by the USC? No. I don't think so. They're they're not they're supported by mainly they're supported by the friend of Latvia, which is a lot of Methodist churches and other churches in in the United States, a lot quite a few in Tennessee and in Texas. Main the main churches are in us like us and here and in Tennessee there's quite a few churches that support them. Uh, what kind of transportation do they have over there? Good. You talked about walking. Good. Buses all over the place in Riga and and in Sacy's there are buses all over the place. Uh, they're fixing to have a train from the airport at the hour and a half to get from Riga to Sacy's. And at the hour and a half by van. We rented a van. And they got a train that, that they're building right now that goes from the airport to Sacy's in 30 minutes. Their, their transportation is good. The pastor of Sacy's lives in Riga. And she's also, she's also a, what's the word? She goes to the hospitals and chaplain. And to be a chaplain, you have to be one of those traditional churches to be a chaplain. And, and she's a chaplain, and she's, she's part-time minister in Sacy's, and she travels back and forth all the time. Do you say that the Madeline is participating in the churches with the women back a while ago? Are the men being more participatory? <clears throat> In two years, I saw the men being a lot more uh, productive. Uh, there's not, you know, there's not a lot of men. But the ones that are there, they're, they're stepping up. Uh, there's one, one gentleman that drove us around everywhere we went, Arthas, and he... Uh, he stayed with us the whole time and his he works on a farm or we'd call it a ranch over here but it, it's like four or five hundred acres they call it different over there i think what they call it but it's four or five hundred acres and he took off work and it, his dad owns the farm or the ranch they have cows and they have chickens and they have everything to raise hay and everything and uh but he he took off just to be with us you know, and drove around. It, it, it was neat. He's a nice, and he's he's actually the the trustee that does all the work, a lot of the work in the parson. I mean, in the church also. Okay. Thank y'all. I got to go. For security. <laughs>